We're living in a day and time. We're being politically correct. It's popular. Let me turn that around again. We're living in a day and time where everybody's saying the name God. But nobody wants to say the name Jesus. We don't want to offend the Muslims. We don't want to offend the Jews. We don't want to offend the Arabs. And so therefore we crucify him of flesh. But I want you to know that there will come a time with every Muslim, with every Buddhist, with every Jew, will have to get down on their knees and have to confess that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So I want every blood wash believer to not wait until then. And if you've ever gone through something, you know right here Tell them. that there's something about the name. Something, yeah. something about the name Jesus. Something about the name. Something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. Yeah. It is the sweetest name. Sweetest name I know. I know. And I love that name. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Is the sweetest name yeah. is the That's sweetest well. name. Just take a minute and explain to him what you're really I trying to say. What you're really trying to say. Some, say people. some people, some people say I'm crazy, but I can't explain. I can't explain the power, the power that I feel when you call his name. When I call your name. That fire, that fire. Said it's just like fire. Where's it? Where's it? Shut up in my mood. Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost gets to moving, said he won't leave me alone. Clean the water, sir. Clean the water, sir. Everybody. Something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name. Something about the name it's the sweetest name, yeah. It is the sweetest name. Sweetest name I know. I know. Wave at me if you love that name. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name, yeah. It is the how sweet is it? How sweet is it? Name. I want you to tell Detroit for a minute. How sweet is it? Sweeter than honey. That is sweeter than honey. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. From the honeycomb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the Holy Ghost gets to moving, just won't leave you alone. <laughs> Said he won't leave me alone. Oh, no. Now tell every Muslim member to, at the name of at Jesus. At the name of Jesus. What's going to happen someday? Ah, every knee has got to bow. So tell him to wait. You don't have to wait till the fire comes. What can they do? You can clap your hands right and praise right it now. now. Ah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Troy, let yeah, me hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Something about the name Jesus. Something about that name. Something pain. about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. Yeah.
Hello, and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church's virtual services. Grace United Methodist Church is located at 7101 North 20th Street in the West Oak Lane section of Philadelphia. Grace can be reached at YouTube and Facebook at Grace UMC, the place to be. We can be reached on the web now at graceumcogonts.org. We can be reached via phone at 215-549-0619. Thank you for joining us, and here's our pastor, the Reverend Stephen Michael Pittman. Good morning, and God bless you. Welcome to Grace UMC is the place to be. We are so glad that you could join us here today. Whatever's on your heart and whatever's on your mind, don't hold on to that. Don't hold on to your burdens. Give your burdens over to Jesus. Our God is a burden bearer. And so whatever's on your heart, as there's many things in the world and many things that may be going on in your life, all these different things are concerning you, just give them over to Jesus because Jesus is able to handle it. As we are about to go into our worship service, friendly reminder, make sure that you have all the materials that you need for the love feast, as this is the first Sunday of the month. So be prepared for that. And also, before I forget, if you haven't done it already, make sure you go vote. This is one of the most, if not the most critical election that we've ever seen in our lives. So make sure you do your responsibility. Go vote because your vote makes a difference and your vote matters. But beloved, we're going to have church virtually. So be blessed in your homes. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Father in heaven, you are worthy to be praised. We thank you on today. We ask that your Holy Spirit move about this service, that your word nourishes our soul, and that we hear from you today. Bless this time, Father, and it's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.
Father God, we thank you because you are such a gracious God. We thank you for your anointing, your presence, and your healing power. Lord, we pray today for those who may be sick, those who may be shut in, those who are looking at surgical procedures, those who may be coming out of surgical procedures. Wherever they may be, physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, Father God, you are able to do a complete work and a complete healing. So, Father God, I just ask that your anointing and your presence touch your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you just strengthen them in every area. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you just help them to praise you despite their circumstances and just know that regardless of how it seems right now, let them know that they have the victory in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we praise you for your healing power. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. You are an awesome God. And without you, Lord, in our lives, we don't know where we would be. And so, Lord, we just praise you and thank you because you are so kind and wonderful to us. And in all things, we give you all honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Grace. Today's announcements are as follows. Please prepare your love feast for later in this morning's worship service. So get your water, juice, bread, or crackers together. This is first Sunday. And I also hope that you remembered to set your clocks back one hour. We are now on standard time. Tuesday, November 3rd is quickly approaching. Yes, election day is finally here. If you have not yet voted, please do so. There is way too much at stake not to vote. Wear your mask. Pack your patience, and if you encounter any problems that cannot be resolved at your polling place, call 877-868-3772. Do not leave without casting your ballot. You could be the difference. Join us for Bible study on November 4th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Your generous giving is greatly appreciated. Please continue in this effort. You can mail your tithes and offering to Grace United Methodist Church, 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA 19138. Or you can bring your tithes and offering to the church mail slot on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Or if you prefer, you can use Bill Pay or the Cash App. Download the Cash App to your cell phones and then give to dollar sign Grace is the place. The Women's Day Committee Chairperson, Joyce Gailiard, would like to thank all of those who have made their Women's Day pledges. If you have not done so yet, it is not too late. So you may continue with giving for uh, Women's Day 2020 by annotating it in your, your weekly envelopes. Just make sure you note that it is for Women's Day 2020. And the committee of Women's Day 2020 would like to thank each and every one of you for your generous giving. Let us continue to pray for those who are on our sick and recovery list. Among them, let us remember Dorothy Tinsley, Rosemary Watts, Bessie White, Joyce Galliard, and Bob Young. Please remember to keep them all in your prayers. And being that today is first Sunday, actually November 1st, we would like to wish everyone celebrating birthdays in November a very happy birthday. No, you don't want me to sing, but I just want you to know that birthday wishes are definitely coming your way. Thank you for your attention. Have a great week and stay safe and get out to vote if you have not done so yet. Grace and peace.
This morning, I will be reading from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 through 19. That is Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 through 19. And the word of God says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians and the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Amen.
word for this morning is, the Lord will make a way somehow. There are many during this time that feel like they are in the wilderness season. When you talk about a wilderness from a physical standpoint, the wilderness is a tough place to be. It's dry, it's arid, it's empty. There's nothing organic, nothing growing. And in the same way, from an emotional and spiritual standpoint, a wilderness season feels dry and it feels like a place where nothing is happening. It can be a place where you feel like you're isolated and by yourself. And what makes a wilderness season a stressful place is that you don't know how to get out of it. You have no idea how everything will work out and how you will overcome the challenges that you face. I have no idea how to make people stop discriminating, hating, and hurting each other. I have no idea how this presidential election is going to turn out and the aftermath of it. I have no idea when we're going to get back to the church building to worship there. I have no idea how to help my family out. I have no idea how to get the finances that I need. I have no idea of what I'm going to do next. And so in the wilderness, you don't know how you're going to overcome the challenges that are in front of you. And you can feel overwhelmed. You can feel like there's no way out. But regardless of where you are in your life, no matter the challenges that you face, even when you don't know what to do, you have to go with what you know. You must know that God is with you. And even though you don't know how to overcome the challenges that you face, you must know that the Lord will make a way for you. In Deuteronomy 31, 8, we read, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will be, he will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And so regardless of the challenges and the obstacles that you face, as a child of the most high God, the Lord will see you through every time. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord will see you through and will make a way for you somehow. In the text, the Israelites had to deal with Babylon. At the time, Babylon was the next up and coming superpower of the world. And so Isaiah prophesied that the Israelites would be held captive for a time, but that at some point God would judge Babylon and the Israelites would be freed from captivity. And so even though they were in a dire circumstance, essentially God was telling the Israelites that they didn't have to worry about the earthly king of Babylon because their heavenly king was with them and was in control. And so in the same way, you must know that God is in control. You must know that God is with you and you can be confident that God will make a way for you based on God's track record. God made a, a way for the Israelites. As Isaiah reminded them, God parted the Red Sea. And so Far when Pharaoh and his army were on their hills, the Lord parted the Red Sea just in the nick of time and made a way for them. And so in the same way, we have to remind ourselves that regardless of what we're facing, God will make a way for us as well. It's interesting in our family, like other families, we are concerned about the possibility of going back to school. Some school districts want to do a hybrid model of virtual learning online and the rest of the learning in person, even during this time of coronavirus. And some want to start even now in the month of November. And so we have a teacher and we have a student in our family. And so 
we try to plan what we can do and what is within our control. But some of these things are outside of our control. But one of the things, as I spoke to my family, one of the things that I said that we're not going to do, we are not going to worry and we're not going to be afraid because we know that if the Lord made a way for us before, we know that the Lord will do it again. Sometimes in your life's journey, you may feel like you're running into some dead ends and right behind you, they, there may be some stuff that's on your heels. Sickness may be on your heels. Trouble may be on your heels. People may be on your heels. Bills may be on your heels. The situation that you're facing looks impossible and it's no way out. But the thing is, you may not see a way, but God has a way. God has made a way for you before. And if God did it before, he'll do it again. Praise the Lord. And you can be confident that the Lord will make a way for you because God has helped others before you who are in the same situation that you're in. People before you have been treated unfairly and faced discrimination of all kinds. People before you have dealt with medical issues, cancer, sickness. People before you have dealt with pandemic, plagues, famine, recession, whatever word you want to use. This is to say, you have to remember that you are not alone. As you look through history and as you look through the Bible, you see that God makes a way for others. If God can keep Noah safe on the ark, if God can move mountains, if God can conquer giants, if God can close the lion's mouth, if God made a way for others, God will make a way for you. God can do anything. Your God is not subject to your problems. Your problems are subject to your God. And God didn't bring you this far to leave you. And don't worry. God can work outside of the box. God can use unusual methods to make a way for you. Stop worrying and leave the details up to the Lord. And one of the benefits of this wilderness experience is that it's causing you to learn how to depend more on God. When you are forced to depend on God, you learn how to stay in fervent prayer. You learn how to stay in the word. You learn how to trust the Lord. Like the Israelites, you depend and rely on God for your daily provision. And of course, we know what happens when we don't rely on God. Uh, that's when you fall into trouble. That's when you go out of, outside of God's presence and the parameters of God's protection and love. There's no covering there. And, and that's what has happened to our country. You know, they took prayer out of schools and they let people who are even atheists convince others that they should do without God. And what happens is when you do that, you're telling God that we don't need you, right? That's what that's saying. And so we need to pray the Solomon prayer, right? Humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways and believe that God can heal our land. But you and I know better through trial and error and our experience with the Lord. God humbles you. And God brings you to the point where you say, Lord, I want you all up in my affairs. Lord, I want you to help me get out of this mess. And in everything I do, Lord, I'm going to seek you first. Because I know, Lord, that my help comes from you. And so during this wilderness time, you're learning how to depend on God. But just know that as you depend on God, it's not a question of if you are coming through, but it's just a matter of when. 
in the text, the scripture doesn't say if you're coming through. It says when you come through the water, God will see you through. And so it's just a matter of time before you come out to the other side. You have to remember that trouble doesn't last always. And so you have to be patient in the middle place. Sometimes like the Israelites, we like to romanticize the past. Sometimes in some cases we wish that we could go back because it's more familiar. Or, or other times our minds are stuck in the past with various regrets and all of that. But as God is preparing the way, we need to leave the regrets of the past behind. And we need to be of the mindset that we need to move forward. Uh, recently, as this year, as I have started the second half of my life, this is what I had to do. I had to forget about what ifs and could have, should have, didn't, all of that. I realized that I needed to stop thinking about the past. I'm of the mindset that I'm going to thank God for his grace and mercy. I'm going to be glad to the Lord that I'm still here today. And I'm of the mindset that this second half of my life can be better than the first. And I'm of the mindset that I'm going to move forward. And so as the Lord makes a way for you, God has given you the grace to move forward. This is to say, remember not the former things, all of your sins, the failures, things that didn't work out what they, they did, whoever they were, are, everything that didn't work out. Don't lament those things. Uh, you have come to the place where you've come too far where you can't give up now and you can't go back now and you can't stay stuck in the middle. You have to be of the mindset that I'm going to move forward. And so God has given you grace and mercy to move forward. You just have to keep on moving forward knowing that the Lord will make a way for you. But the great thing is, is that the place that you're at now, you're just passing through. When they went through the wilderness, the Israelites, they didn't build houses there. They stayed in tents, temporary housing, because they had no intentions of staying in the wilderness. This is to say the place that you are spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, the place where you may be at right now, if it's a, a down place, it's a place that you're just passing through. Don't get used to your body uh, being hurt because you're not staying there. You're going to make it to the other side. You're going to be healed. Don't get used to being broke. You're not going to stay there. You're going to make it to the other side. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Don't get used to being down, upset, and depressed. You're not staying in a place of misery. You're going to make it to the other side. God is going to make you laugh and give you peace and give you joy. Don't get used to the difficult place that you are in because you're just passing through. You're going to make it to the other side. You just have to keep on moving forward. And remember, your past does not compare to your future. In the text, God was telling the Israelites, I'm doing a new thing. In your life, seasons change. You have to remember that God desires to do a new thing. Maybe things didn't work out in the past or opportunities were missed, but God desires to do something new. And whatever God desires to do, it is bigger, it is greater than what you can imagine. But today, just know that despite of everything that is going on around you, believe that the Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord is with you. Just keep on holding to God's unchanging hand. Keep trusting the Lord and the Lord will see you through each and every time. Amen.
let us pray. Father, I thank you that indeed, regardless of what we go through and the impossibility of different situations that somehow you make a way. Let us continue to trust you. Let us continue to hold on to your unchanging hand. And Father God, we praise you in advance for the victory in Jesus Christ. God, we pray for the Wallace family. We ask that you heal hurting hearts. And we ask, Lord, that these situations where black people are harmed, hurt, mistreated, killed, that they cease and they stop. We ask, Lord, for more understanding between law enforcement and the community. We ask for love and compassion as human beings, God. We need to treat each other with love. And there's training that needs to take place, God. Training about cultural issues, training about mental health. And so there are many things that uh, law enforcement needs training in. And so God, Lord, we ask Lord that these things take place and that you remove division from the land and that you give people a heart of compassion just to love one another. Lord, we praise you and thank you for you an awesome God. We thank you at all times, even though this pandemic was very difficult. We ask, Lord, that we just continue to look toward you. We ask, Lord, that you are with our frontline workers. We ask for their protection to keep them safe. We ask that you keep everyone safe, God. And we just pray that we grow stronger during this experience, that we learn how to depend on you more we learn how to trust you more and that we become unified together as believers and as people because of the experiences that we have endured. And so, Lord, we praise you and thank you always in Jesus name. Amen. As we move forward in today's service, if, if there's one today who does not know Jesus and a pardon of their sins now, is the time to receive Jesus as Lord of your life. The Lord has loved you with an everlasting love. All you have to do is ask the Lord to forgive your sins, come into your heart and be your personal Lord and Savior. And as you repent and as you ask Jesus to come into your heart and into your life, you become a new creation in Christ. And if you've made that decision today to receive Jesus into your heart and into your life, we know that heaven rejoices and we rejoice with you as well. Amen. And now we will have the love feast. We join together as a community of faith with whom Christ is present, we set symbols on our table to remind us of his promises to us. We are reminded of the light of Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Bread, the symbol to remind us of God's love. I am the bread of life. The bread of life, the bread that I shall give is myself for the life of the world. A cup representing the cup of salvation. Through this, we remember Jesus' love is poured out for us all. So God, we come and we welcome your presence with us. May the food and companionship we share nourish our bodies, hearts, and minds. And may our spirits be refreshed. As we live in the light of your presence with us now and at all times and places, amen. As you break bread and drink of the cups, let us be reminded that God loves you. God loves us all. You may partake of the bread. You may partake of the cup. Amen.
Thank you all for joining us today. And before we go, friendly reminder, please continue to be faithful with your tithes and offerings. We want to remind you of the different ways that you can give to our ministry. You can send your tithes and offerings to the physical address, 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA 19138. You can use Bill Pay, Grace United Methodist Church. The church office mail slot is available on Tuesdays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you can use Cash App, dollar sign, Grace is the Place. So again, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. And I know and believe that as you continue to be faithful in your giving, God will continue to bless you and make sure that your needs are met as well. Well, God bless all of you. Please have a, a blessed and wonderful week. May God continue to smile upon you. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you.
one of these mornings won't be very long. You look for me. A place where there'll be nothing, nothing to do but simply walk around heaven all day. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna jump and shine. Get together.